I should like to congratulate you, Dr. Moeti, on your reappointment as Regional Director for Africa for a period of five years as from 1st February 2020 and to combine our best wishes for your success in all your endeavors in the region. Dr. Moeti, may I invite you to come forward? So I think for the board members, it's first time to observe this ceremony. That is a is, um, signing of offer of the appointment. So, sign has completed. May I invite uh, you, uh, uh, Dr. Moetti, to say a few words? Uh, chairperson and uh, distinguished members of the executive board and delegates from other member states, Dr. Tedros, Director General, and dear colleagues, my fellow regional directors, representatives of partner organizations and my WHO colleagues. It is truly the honor of my life to serve as a WHO Regional Director for Africa, and I'd like to thank, through the Executive Board, all our member states for your trust in giving me the opportunity to lead WHO's work in the region for a second term. And thank you through Ambassador Atalia Mulukumbe, who is here in the room, to the government of my country, Botswana, for having supported my candidature. I'd also like to sincerely thank my husband, who's also somewhere in the room, and family, <laughs> he's in the gallery, and family for standing by me during my first term and encouraging me to go. <laughs> and encouraging me to go for the second term, of course, with many exhortations about work-life balance. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with the challenges to our family life. Sadly, my mother, who supported me so much throughout my first term, having introduced me to Geneva and World Health Assembly meetings about 40 years ago, when she attended as a Botswana delegate and encouraged me to miss medical school classes in London for a week each time, will be cheering me from another place as she passed away last September. Together with our member states and partners and with staff members driving the change, we are transforming WHO in the African region into an effective, results-driven, and accountable organization as part of the global WHO transformation. Thank you to the African ministers of health and their officials for having embraced the change adapting some of our tools and approaches to national systems. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to my WHO colleagues in the regional office, in our country offices, and in headquarters for your dedication towards making health for all a reality. I'd also like to acknowledge all the frontline health workers caring for communities, 
some in incredibly challenging situations. I have learned so much from my interactions with them in visits to many countries. I'd like to also mention a special word in my turn of appreciation for our late colleague, Pete Salama. He and I had a common background in UNICEF and we were plotting about how to make primary health care in WHO a reality. So I will miss him dearly and our work will be also in honor of what we shared with him. A special word of appreciation to all the partners who support and complement our work, particularly those who believed in our transformation and change and accompanied us every step of the way. In the coming five years, I shall work with my colleagues and partners to help accelerate action towards achieving universal health coverage in the African region, assuring that no one misses out on health care because the cost is too high or that they live too far away from the capital city, and also ensuring delivery of good quality health services that result in better health outcomes. African heads of state have expressed their commitment to UHC both at the African Union and the UN General Assembly last year. I'm excited to see the practical steps being energetically pursued by ministers of health and encouraged by the number of countries asking for help in developing or updating their health financing strategies in improving human resources for health, access to essential medicines, the functioning of their health districts, and other key areas. Our engagement with the private sector will be expanded and strengthened, making us better able to advise and support governments in their collaboration with it, in line with the equity and affordability emphasis of our member states. We've started on this with the partners in our Harmonization for Health in Africa platform, particularly the African Development Bank. We will continue working with our member states to get the job done, ensuring that they learn from and adapt each other's experiences. And we do have much to do. The performance of our regional health systems, as assessed in line with WHO's Universal Health Coverage Index, scores an average of 46 points out of 100, ranging from 28 to 78, compared to a global average of 66. We are transitioning phase two of our regional transformation agenda into complete alignment with the global WHO transformation. And I thank our DG, Dr. Tedros, for the inspiration, the innovation, and energy that he has brought into that process. We will strive to ensure that our presence in countries makes a difference, and also ensure that our staff are engaged and empowered to lead transformative processes. We are restructuring the regional office to enhance our delivery on the 13th general program of work. And driving integration of work across different disease programs, strengthening people-centered delivery of services through systems will be among our top priorities. Our teams working to build resilient health systems and to prepare for and respond to disease outbreaks and health emergencies will work in increasingly integrated ways to ensure that national health strategies and budgets incorporate the building of preparedness and international health regulations related capacities in a sustained way, for instance, and equally, to be certain that the delivery of essential health services such as immunization, antiretroviral therapy, withstands the shocks of outbreaks and disasters with special focus on countries in protracted humanitarian crises. We will do more to ensure that communities have access to life-saving public health interventions and to prevent, control, and eliminate diseases, including reaching the milestone of polio eradication later on this year. This will include addressing the social determinants of health and working across sectors, in particular through collaboration with our sister UN agencies in the context of UN reform and supporting multi-sectoral approaches to prevent disease. We will continue to build our strong partnership with the African Union Commission and regional economic communities facilitating particularly cross-border and regional collaboration to prepare for and respond to epidemics. Together, we will make globalization work better for health in Africa. For example, to achieve better pricing, safety, and quality of medical products through pooled procurement mechanisms and supporting the establishment of the African medicines agencies. 
We've realized, following the tremendous response to our call for innovations to improve health in the region, that harnessing and scaling up high-impact innovations will have significant benefits. We will expand our work in this area, including using digital health to strengthen capacities and foster the development and sustainable uptake of health innovations. Speeding up integration of new tools and technologies into health services in countries is a natural fit with our roles in developing national policies and strategies and strengthening national and regional regulatory functions. This work will be expanded. At the country level, with the support of partners, we will implement the outcomes of the functional reviews of our country offices to ensure our teams are fit for purpose and ready to respond to national priorities and needs. And guided by the Global Action Plan on SDG 3, we will harmonize our efforts at country and regional levels within the UN family and with other partners, including civil society and the private sector. Your support, dear member states, partners and colleagues, will be vital to take forward all that we are aiming for. I'm very thankful for our frank and constructive collaboration, and I look forward to continuing to work together to improve the health and well-being of the 1.1 billion people in the African region. I thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, um, uh, Madam Adi Aflo. I shall now give the floor to the Director General. Dr. Tedros, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Chair. When uh, Sidi was escorted to this place, mm. you, I could hear the special sound. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when I was elected two years ago, more than two now, that was the voice that dominated the whole uh, assembly. I remember it very well. And uh, one friend said, ooh la la, Africa is in the house. <laughs> yeah, it's a very special feeling actually when I heard about it, when I heard now. Uh, and congratulations, my sister, you. on your reappointment as WHO Regional Director for, for Africa. You have been really wonderful. And this election demonstrates that you enjoy both the confidence and the trust of the member states. And for good reason, under, under your leadership, the region is making very encouraging progress. There is tangible progress in many countries for universal health coverage. Member states have strengthened their emergency preparedness and the time it takes to detect and contain outbreaks has reduced dramatically. There has not been a single case of wild polio virus in Africa for three years. And if that remains the case, Africa will be certified as polio free this year. The number of people with access to HIV treatment has doubled. More people are being tested than ever before and incidence is declining. Some countries are recording some of the fastest declines globally in TB, and some are on track to eliminate malaria. 19 countries are rolling out WHO's package of essential non-communicable disease interventions to integrate NCD prevention and management into primary health care. More and more countries are strengthening tobacco control and 35 member states now have multi-sectoral action plans. You also fostered WHO's first innovation challenge and many of the transformation initiatives you have implemented in the region have been incorporated into our global transformation. As the first woman to be elected regional director for Africa, you have also made gender equality a priority with impressive improvements in gender balance among international staff. Of course, you know that the continent is still facing many challenges. Out-of-pocket health spending remains a major impediment. Many countries lack the infrastructure and the health workers they need to achieve and sustain universal health coverage. Progress against malaria has stalled. Antimicrobial resistance threatens to unwind much of the progress we have made. 
Each of these challenges demands courageous political leadership, intelligent investment, and creativity. And there is no one better for that task than you. I have very strong confidence in you. My dear sister, I greatly value your leadership, partnership, and friendship. You have played a key role in WHO's global policy program as we work together to build the WHO of the future. I am honored to call you my colleague, and I look forward to working with you closely during your second term. You have the full support of the region, and you have mine too, and also the global. I've already spoken. So congratulations again. And the other half, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining. Thank you. I know her husband actually before her, so we're okay. friends. <laughs> so those who like to um, to take pictures with your mobile phones. No, no. She oh, but I think nice no, 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 no. I think that is official photographer. Will oh, yeah. we take? <laughs> so how how we can do that? Stand up or just she like will this? Stand between me. And okay, you. good. Come. Yeah, good. in the center. Oh, okay. Oops. But um, yes, would you like to take um, yourself and um, yes, RD? Sir.